Hi there. Welcome to Talking Sonics. I'm Jamie. I hope you're very well indeed. Yes, it's been a long time between drinks, but uh, here I am. 2024 is in full swing for me, doing a lot of music production, a lot of self-songwriting and uh, basically getting into a new space here in Southport, Queensland. And really something I've wanted to talk about for a long time are essential microphones for a home recording studio. And I'm going to go through my little kit, a very small kit, um, and uh, yeah, just explain some of the sounds, the uses, the textures, maybe a little bit of the technology and style behind some of these microphones, and a couple of little stories along the way. So stick with me as we talk everything from SM57s through to vintage tube mics from Neumann and some pretty cool Australian made extras. Stay with me. So microphones for the home studio. Let's get right into it with one of these guys. This is a Shure SM57. I'm sure you're well aware of what they are, but you know, don't discount how wonderful they are. These are an absolute staple. And for me as a 14 year old kid with a Tascam 4 track, I had a pair of these and produced albums that got to radio, believe it or not. It was independent. Melbourne Radio Triple R and their demo demo derby program, but um, it's you know don't underestimate what you can do with a fabulous SM57. Now, of course, most people would use them on guitar amplifiers, as I do, um, over the top of a snare drum, some underneath a snare drum, but uh, you know, wonderful because of their sweetness. Um, there's a 4K kind of bitey hump, which is great for electric guitar amps. And the proximity effect on these guys is wonderful. Uh, doesn't have the pop shield, so it's not an SM58, obviously. But um, look, it's really robust, really solid. I think I've had these guys for about 30 years. Um, it still looks brand new. I haven't knocked it around too much, but what a wonderful thing. You can't really have a studio without a couple of these guys. Get a pair. They're even amazing for room mics ambient mics on drums. I used one of these just mono recording drums at a distance, so an ambient mic for a drum kit, and it was just this wonderful, gnarly, gritty texture that added some body and balls and sort of roominess. So never underestimate the power of the SM57, a must-have. And while we are on dynamic microphones, yes, the good old Sennheiser 421. You're probably familiar with the black 421s. This is the uh, vintage ND model, uh, which has the S and uh, N slider for music and uh, singing, which the singing is basically a setting for rolling off uh, the low end. But um, look, fairly simple mic, but something I've been using a lot for vocals. I would be using this yeah, you know, on drums and, you know, guitar amps as well. But I've used this thing um, on several vocal um, recording takes and preferred it over a condenser. Why? Because it has this kind of really lovely top end, but also this kind of gritty, really pronounced, um, I guess, presence about them, um, particularly these vintage ones. You can pick them, pick these up maybe for around sort of five to six hundred dollars um yeah gorgeous things look out for them uh including a complete mic clip that's not snapped or broken there's a, a bit of a, a history of these um, either going missing or getting broken so make sure you get a mic clip and this one has the old style touch all connector so think about connections you can wire these up yourself or, or find someone to help you uh, put that together. So, yeah, there you go. These, this is a bit of a staple. I think um, it's probably just as good to have a black modern um, 421. Great on a bass guitar amplifier as well. Um, on toms they're used commonly. Uh, there are lots of choices nowadays and some more modern choices, but 
these guys are a staple and even you might even notice um, that I'm using back to using this with my voice for recording the voiceover for uh, for talking sonics <laughs> people have commented this thing actually sounds the best over any uh, lavaliers or other microphones I've used just for having a chat so there you go she's a bit of a gem um, no doubt that's the reason why a lot of radio jocks have used these over the years so Here's another classic, the AKG D112 Egg uh, kick drum microphone. Look, I've used this on floor toms, pretty damn nice on a, on a floor tom, but, you know, mixed attitude I have for this one on a kick drum, although so many great records that you've probably listened to and loved have used these on bass drums. Really kind of clicky, clacky, kind of pronounced hard beta sound um, with these, so kind of be cautious as to how you how close you might uh, put it inside a drum um, they, they can be really quite almost too present in a way um, but yeah good kind of solid staple kick drum microphone very affordable very usable and you'd be surprised at how many great records they've been used on of course if you can manage to find these days a vintage d12 or d30 or d60 well, there's hardly any available <laughs> around in the world that are that are left in con good condition and working. Um, but yeah, look, the vintage ones have got a s rounder, smoother sort of top end, and don't have the kind of really hard, clicky kind of. I think it's even even a raspy kind of bite on a kick drum. But you know, it depends on the beater on the kick drum and the player, of course. But yeah, look for for four hundred dollars or so, or who knows, Facebook Marketplace, a couple hundred bucks. You might be lucky. Very good staple microphone for low end. You can use it on toms. You, you can use it on kick drum, bass guitar amplifiers. Experiment with it. You know, it could be a good room mic for other instruments. Great classic microphone. So this thing is kind of like, well, is it a microphone? Is it a ray gun? <laughs> <laughs> did Elvis sing into this thing? Yes, he did. If you uh, if you check it out, this is an EV triple six. Now, a little bit, a little bit rare, um, and a little bit kind of, what's the word I'm I'm looking for? Um, underrated, basically. I think this thing is incredible on a bass drum. Absolutely incredible, considering it's hard to find the D12s and the D30s. See if you can seek an EV triple six, affordable. This one cost me around six hundred dollars Australian. So robust. I mean, like you'd be hard pressed to break this even if you drove over it with your four wheel drive. I mean, it's solid as a rock. It has incredible low end response, like astonishing. Um, and that the top end. I mean, it's got presence, but it's this lovely kind of natural woody kind of bite to it. You know, like. Just so natural. I mean, if you want a John Bonham kick drum, this guy. Now, this is, you know, my preferred choice over the AKG D12 or D112. Um, actually, I'd say even over the vintage D12, this is my preferred choice. So very underrated, great microphone. I haven't experimented a lot with other instrumentation like guitar amps or bass amps, but I suspect it would be a gem. So... Maybe I better get doing that soon. So EV triple <laughs> six. It's the uh, the sign of you know what. Okay, what's next? So here's something fairly standard, fairly affordable. AKG C one thousand. If you looked at one of the very earliest videos I produced for Talking Sonics, you can see me comparing a shootout acoustic guitar shootout with this microphone with vintage Neumann KM54 tube mic. But, you know, interestingly enough, <laughs> a lot of people preferred this. I thought it was more brittle in the top end than the, uh, than the Neumann. But here's a little tip. You can screw off the top like this. Put that down there. And there's a little plastic cap here. And there we go. We're straight to the uh, the condenser capsule there. So, marking stringed instruments or room marking. That's actually much smoother. 
a little brighter and a little better like that. So very, very affordable microphone. They're everywhere, these things. Phantom powered, of course. Put that back together. <laughs> AKG C1000. Very robust, very strong. Again, you could probably drive it over with a truck and it won't break. Now, it might dint a bit here, but um, yeah, maybe don't drive your uh, your vehicle over your microphone kit. But, you know, always handy to have one of these around in your mic kit. And certainly if you want to record stringed instruments and overheads for drums when you're on a budget, probably not a bad little choice. However, if budget does permit, I would recommend something very special. I have here, well, it's my must-have, but a very lucky must-have. It's a Neumann KM54 tube microphone. Uh, really silky top end. Um, yeah, have a listen to the comparison video with the C1000, um, AKG C1000 on, on this guy. Get you a little close up there. So just beautiful silky top end. I mean, they're, they're really delicate microphones. Um, a little rare tube in this one. Um, even the KMs, the newer, newer KM um, pencil mics or small diaphragm condensers are wonderful. Neumanns tend to have just such a lovely, gentle, smooth top end response. Very even across the mid range. This guy is killer on a drum overhead as well. Although, watch the SBL, watch the volume. Um, probably better on a vintage kit rather than a modern drum kit with a very loud snare drum. It is a delicate thing and it needs a lot of love and care, but that is a gem for me and I'm lucky to have it. But um, look, if you can find any vintage microphones or the Mojave um, tube mics, the Mojave small condensers are really similar sounding. I've AB'd them before, so that's another one to look out for. Um, of course, you know, there's an, a range of, of new um, microphone manufacturers that do produce tube um, small diaphragm con condensers. Very good. So on to the big stuff, the big condensers. I have here an OPR, Open Plan Recording Plan 87, which is uh, Mark's U87 microphone. Now, once upon a time, for many, many years, I was the owner of a lovely U87, which was a lovely, smooth thing to sing with. It was just incredible. I have this kind of inbuilt knowledge and note on what this thing sounds like in terms of the U87. I cannot believe just how close this is to the real thing. This is the most amazing one-to-one -one clone and it just has this amazing smooth top end, really low on sibilant, really beautifully present. This is an incredibly well machined, um, you know, gold spluttered diaphragm etc 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 every bit of love and care from mark in melbourne who makes these has been put into it um, he's also doing a u67 which i'm sure would be just as incredible so you know that is a really great staple and look if that sort of 1500 dollars mark for one of these is still out of your budget well you can't go past an australian made road microphone and that's really where I started myself in singing and recording. My home studio started with an Akai 12 track and this one Rode NT1 microphone. You can pick these up for next to nothing. They're really quite good. They don't have the smoothness in the top end like a Neumann, nowhere near it. Um, but I've also had this one altered or, or had the capsule changed by Mark at Open Plan Recording. It's a gem. So um, that's another great option. So let's not forget being practical in the home studio. You do need a couple of at least passive DIs. There are some other more deluxe DIs that you can get for instruments. But here's something interesting that you may not know about. It's a red box DI, which is a cabinet simulator and a hell of a lot more affordable than the Universal Audio Ox load uh, and simulator box. But um, 
Not a bad tone for additional textures from guitar amplifiers. So put that between the output of your amp and your cab. You can get something pretty interesting with the Hughes and Kettner red box. They still make these. So have a play, have a think about investing in one of these because it's great for additional recording textures. Now, speaking of guitar amp marking, I know so many people love the Royer ribbons, the little small um, grill kind of style little pencil ribbons. Here's a picture now here. So, you know, the difference between, say, an SM57 and a ribbon might be just a slightly different top end response, a different textural kind of feel. You can also try the U87 or another condenser or a range of different dynamics on a guitar amp, but people love the Royers. Also the coals for overheads for drums is very popular or on a piano, but for my money, I'd still go for say a U87 on a piano or combine that with a pencil microphone with a small diaphragm. So that's an option. But one thing that I think you know, again, if there is the budget and if you can find it for texture and particularly for folk music, um, is the AEA re-release or new versions of the RCA ribbon microphones. These are the old beautiful things designed in the 1930s and 40s for commercial radio. The big guy, the 44 uh, BX microphone is just an amazing, incredible beautifully sounding thing and check out the link below of an artist I'm following who is using these ribbon mics very very well for folk music it's such a lovely texture so you know you could find maybe an old ribbon microphone there are a few um, choices and options around from different brands you can still find the old RCAs or the RCA juniors so that is another sort of tonal texture choice that could be great for a home studio. But that's it. I mean, that's, that's for me, in a, in a way, there are some of the staples. You may have other choices or ideas as to what makes a great little microphone kit. There's a lot of choice out there. But uh, that's it for me. It seems to be enough for me to create good music. I'm enjoying using this little kit here next to me. So thank you for joining me on Talking Sonics. If you've got any further comments, please uh, talk to me below. I'm always commenting with everybody who uh, talks to me on this channel. Please subscribe if you have not already done so. Click the bells, do all those things, and I hope to see you very soon. Take care.